Thanks to Skyloom for sponsoring today's video. If you want to try out Luminar Neo, use the link in the description and you will get 10% off your purchase. Can you guess the focal length? I think the focal length on this is actually zero. Today I'm out squirrel and bird hunting with my telephoto lens and I'm recording this on the Insta360 X3 with which I have kind of, you know, love and hate relationship. I'll do a whole video on the Insta360 about the things that I love and the things that I hate and just don't mind the very poor video quality in this video. I mean, if I don't find squirrels here, then I don't know where I'll find them. So for today's video, the idea is to capture one photograph of either a bird or a squirrel with my telephoto lens, and then we head back to the studio, and I'm gonna show you how you can really easily edit this using Luminar Neo, the very special photography editing software that I've been using for two weeks now, and it's really blowing my mind, so I wanna share this with you guys. Okay, so we're back in the studio. I've already imported all of the photographs into Luminar Neo and I'm going to show you how you can use this software to really good effect. So let's dive right in. So Luminar Neo consists of three panels. You have your catalog where you import all the photographs, where you organize them the way you want and where you can just choose which ones are your favorites or not. You have your presets where you can save presets that you've used in other edits and apply them to specific photographs that you want. I'm not a fan of presets but they do speed up a lot of the batch working processing. And then you have the edits page where you do the edit and you can see that overall it's a very minimalistic design, very non-distracting and very photography or photograph image oriented. And here you have all of the tools that you can use within Luminar. Now let's first choose the photograph for today's edit and I've already chosen one and it's this one right over here. First of all, in the catalog page, I'm going to take this one and put it into HDR Merge. Now this is an extension which merges multiple images with different exposures together into an HDR image, but it also works with just one image. So let me show you how this works. So it's like applying auto settings in Lightroom, but here it's done in a more intelligent way because Luminar is figuring out what's in the foreground, what's in the background, what's the subject, what's not the subject, and it's already applying this information to the image and it really works amazingly. And here we have the result under the HDR merge folder. You can see how well this actually made it like high dynamic range, you know, the highlights over here which were blown out are visible now and it just did the auto adjustment settings amazingly. So let's switch into the edit step and start editing the photograph. If I zoom in, you will see that the image is quite noisy and I'm going to use the noiseless AI. Now that AI stands for artificial intelligence kind of making its own calculation as to where it needs to apply more of the effect of, ev of every effect that has this AI feature and where it doesn't need to apply it. So it's kind of a smart way of applying specific effects without the need for you to mask everything in and out. Now you can still use masks, but with this artificial intelligence, it speeds up the work a lot. So it's not like Midjourney or Chatbot GP where you type in a couple of keywords and you know Midjourney creates this like wonderful artistic scary like oh my god this is this is the future or what you know it's, it's not like this here AI helps you to achieve your result faster so let's use the noiseless AI in this case and the software is telling me that I should use the low setting and I'm gonna choose the low setting see how this is done oh and it really cleaned up the noise and it left a bunch of the structure in so before and after you can see that the noise was just cleaned on the background but on the subject you still have more or less all of the detail and this is really the power of this artificial intelligence control now this is the restoration of the image done so I've removed the noise and that's all I have to do now I'm going to go into crop I'm going to crop this image in a little bit I can do it manually or I can choose composition AI which in a lot of cases actually does a really good job. I mean, it's taking away your control, but for instance, in this case, if I apply this, this is now a very well composed image. I mean, I would probably crop it the same way, more or less, but here it's just much faster. And you can use this as a starting point to crop in your images if you do crop them. However, you should always get them right in the field. That's the first rule. Okay, the next thing we're going to go is the develops tab. Now here, this is very familiar. You have your highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. You can close this down. 
you have your curves, your colors, your white balance, your sharpening, your noise reduction, like regular noise reduction. And if I zoom into the image, I see that it's not really, really sharp. So I'm going to apply a bit of sharpness, just a tiny bit like this. And I'm going to play with some of these tools. This is now looking much better. The foreground is really bright and it's taking a lot of the attention. Now I want to dim this down and I can do this in many ways. I can use the develops tab again. So I'm just like using it another time, but I can also use the Relight AI the, in, in the creative tab. This is, this is a really amazing tool because it figures out what's in the foreground and what's in the background. So I can tone down the brightness of the foreground. I can brighten up the background for instance. This helps a lot of the masking. So if I close this down, I can use this again. But if I go into the edits, this is where all of the edits that I've already done are stored. So first we did the denoise, then we did the one develop, then we did the second develop of the foreground, and then we did this kind of foreground dimming down. So I can go back and change everything that I want within the tab. I can also reset it. The next thing that we can do is add some atmosphere. So let's go into the atmosphere AI. You can see if I push this all the way. Now the subject is in front of the fog so it's actually applying the fog <laughs> into the background which is really amazing I mean imagine how much masking I would have to do to apply this effect manually in Photoshop for instance here is just like one slider and I'm done that's it that's it that's all I have to do Next, I'm going to play with the color and I'm going to use the color harmony, which I find that it's a really good tool. I'm going to brighten up the brilliance and make everything a little warmer. So like this, I'm going to add the glow Orton effect. Now, if you watch my videos, you know how much struggle there is to actually add the Orton effect in Photoshop. Here you have a dedicated tool just for this. So if I bring this up, you can see that I'm making the image softer and much more dreamy like so wow I mean this is amazing I can go into the edits maybe tint down the background fog like this go back to glow wow and for the final touch I'm going to add a vignette which is also a dedicated tool and there we go so the before and the after I mean my god so easy so fast so easy let me know down in the comments what you think about this editing software if you do want to try it out use the link in the description and get 10% off your purchase if you decide to purchase this and hit the like button for the video subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one bye bye